This is going to be an overview of the uh, Rage Master RF retro reflector used by the uh, NSA. This is used for what they refer to as the Vagrant Collection, which is uh, the interception of remote computer monitors by installing a uh, little hardware retro reflector into the actual targeted VGA monitors video cable itself. Um, this device uh, taps the red video line within the cable bundle and then when um, it re illuminated by a remote radar unit like the CTX 4000 or the photo angle the uh, red video signal becomes modulated within the backscattered signal and that can then be uh, processed and displayed on an external monitor so you can uh, essentially see what is on your uh, targeted monitor in the NSA's uh, photo here you can see the actual parts installed in the uh, standard VGA monitor cable uh, this isn't black and white but if you refer to the colored version in the actual PDF file itself uh, you'll see a little device here with a U that is an NEC 33 uh, 284A FET off to the left here there's a little black device with uh, numbers on it this is a 1 mega ohm bias uh, resistor from the gate of the FET to the left ground of the shield on top there is a brown device that is a AC coupling capacitor that actually taps the red video line and feeds the uh, video signal into the gate of the FET off to the right is a device that is connected from the gate to the uh, right source or right, yeah, it's the right source pin this is a diode this is called a DC restore clamp I'll explain that a little more later on the drain of the FET is a little piece of wire to the right shield of the cable that is the actual antenna itself and a very clever device is connecting the separate left and right shields the shields have been uh, isolated on this uh, video cable there's a small about six turn air inductor in parallel with the uh, drain antenna that reconnects the left and right shields of the cable and what this does is it couples the uh, horizontal and vertical sync pulses as a uh, ground spikes into the backscattered signal itself so you can um, essentially monitor the horizontal and vertical synchronization frequencies um, without having to tap the individual lines within the uh, cable bundle itself because as they uh, uh, as are clocked essentially inside the computer the little uh, ground spikes on the uh, the shield of the cable itself and those are basically coupled into the uh, drain antenna when it's uh, illuminated by a remote radar unit here's a schematic of uh, the experiments we're going to be working on here This would be our, our targeted VGA uh, computer monitor cable. So we just tap the red video line through an AC coupling capacitor. We want to maintain a high impedance because these uh, video lines tend to be low impedance 75 ohms. If we load down the 75 ohm uh, video signal, that could reveal that we have an a implant installed. Next, we have the uh, DC clamp diode, the gate bias resistor, the FET itself, drain antenna connected to the shield, and the air core inductor reconnecting the uh, main cable shields back together again that couples the pulses into the antenna. And then we have our remote uh, photo angle or CTX4000 illumination unit. Um, the actual processing of the received signal is a little more complex than other things. They don't like the uh, Tawdry Yard or the uh, uh, Loud Auto. Um, you need to essentially view the targeted monitor's sync frequencies, then you need to generate them yourself in the, uh, the signal processing unit. Otherwise, you, when you display the signal on your monitor, it will roll across the screen instead of being uh, you know, stable. Ideally, you'd phase lock the uh, 
uh, sync frequencies once you find them to the uh, exact uh, targeted monitor specifications. This is an example of a uh, video signal from like a VGA monitor. Or so uh, the actual video signal itself is analog. It's between about 0 and 700 millivolts. 0 volts is essentially black. 700 millivolts is the maximum intensity of that particular color. There's three colors on your a VGA monitor or a VGA series monitor. Uh, uh, red, green, and blue. This just taps the uh, red video line. There's uh, a blanking interval before the video. It's called the, the front porch, and there's one in the end called the back porch. That's essentially the uh, blank spots on your monitor. And you have the horizontal synchronization frequencies, and this starts the scan across your monitor from left to right. And that's those sync frequencies. There's also a vertical sync that moves the line down, so you'd have your steps across and your steps down. But the vertical sync frequency can be divided down from the horizontal sync frequency so it's just best to locate the sync, horizontal sync frequency first. That's usually in the ultrasonic range like 31 kilohertz or something. Now since the intensity of the uh, red video is an analog signal and we are AC coupling it into our gate, we add this single diode, it's called a DC clamp. And what that does is it forces this line essentially to ground. So it re-initializes the uh, instantaneous voltage value of that analog signal. So it essentially shifts it down. It eliminates the, uh, or it generates a reference, essentially a ground reference, so we can reinstate the uh, 0 to 700 uh, millivolt reference instantaneous reference on our received signal back at the uh, remote radar unit. And that can just be a, a standard uh, 1N914 or whatever diode. Though you probably want uh, the smallest voltage drop possible. On the scope here, I have a little VGA signal generator, and it is generating a signal, an all red signal, at uh, 800 by 600 pixel resolution, at around uh, 47, you know, 46.84, uh, 89, just a 47 kilohertz horizontal sync frequency. The bottom trace is the horizontal sync. The top trace is our video. You can see our video front porch. It's, uh, since this is an all red signal, it's at its maximum intensity. Essentially, you know, one volt or so, whatever. And our little back porch signal. And then we have our horizontal sync frequencies. I don't have the vertical sync frequencies on here. You can see the, uh, the vertical or the horizontal you know, starts the trace. There's your video, and it stops tra or shifts it down. The vertical would shift it down the next line, and the horizontal and the vertical. You know, that's how it essentially paints the uh, picture on your screen. And then um, the red, green, and blue signals then have their own intensity, and when they mix on your screen, you can get uh, essentially you know all the, the millions of different colors. Here's an actual Rage Master unit. I constructed. You can see how the uh, VGA cable is split into two independent shields. And I kind of tap the red video line. Of it. It's actually a little piece of coaxial cable. I'm tapping the center of the coaxial cable. Be very careful not to short anything out with the uh, uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor. I have our bias resistor. I have a FET, I'm just using uh, Fujitsu uh, FHX35LG. 
and I have the uh, little surface mount diode for our DC restore clamp. A little piece of wire is our drain antenna. Um, you'll notice on the NSA's photo they have one of the source pins of the FET on the left shield and the drain on the right shield. That also generates a small differential voltage that helps to couple any uh, horizontal sync or horizontal and vertical sync pulses you know into the backscattered signal. And then to reconnect the shields, I made a little six turn air core inductor. The, the, the exact value of this inductor is isn't really important, but uh, it, needless to say it should be as small as possible. The real rage master units are then covered you say with a ferrite bead, but I believe this is this is what a ferrite bead is. This device that's molded onto your uh, VGA. This is a standard uh, DB25 or DB15 uh, VGA monitor cable. They they're most likely using a fake ferrite bead because these are designed to block RF. And if you were to cover up your implant, it would essentially uh, attenuate your uh, illumination carrier. monitor here I can show you the uh, what the video signal looks like that's our our red video signal at uh, 800 by 600 pixel resolution. Our 46.8 kilohertz or it's our horizontal sync frequency. And uh, 75 hertz is our vertical sync frequency. I'm going to put this monitor and disconnect the VGA uh, signal generator. So this is gonna this cable is gonna be our monitor input essentially. I'll put this that'll be our target monitor. I'm putting it on the ground. I'm gonna connect the VGA signal generator with our, our all red video signal into our uh, this is a cable with the Rage Master retro reflector installed in it. And I made a little adapter just to uh, connect it up to the uh, test monitor. spectrum analyzer here. I have our Decatur radar unit operating at around uh, 10.535 gigahertz. This is going to be our illumination radar. You can see the display on the spectrum analyzer. Um, there's a lot of talk about how to uh, prevent these type of uh, essentially uh, bugs from being used against you. And there's these uh, pieces of foam. They're RF absorbing foam called Echozorb. Uh, they're designed to uh, like reduce resonance inside cavities or to absorb reflected RF and to uh, you know kind of directionalize antennas and stuff like that. The problem is it's really really expensive but you can sometimes find them at ham fests. That's why I, where I got these. That's why they're in a weird shape. Um, salvage them from like old military hardware sometimes. And if you uh, don't watch the, uh, the spectrum analyzer is set up at uh, 5 megahertz per division right now. At uh, 10 dB per vertical division. 
this little antenna over here as the input. And of course, we have the illumination radar here. And if I put the three pieces of foam in between them, you can see how it attenuates the signal. There's a good, you know, 12, 15 dB of attenuation. That doesn't seem a lot, like a lot, but uh, it basically forces the uh, your uh, monitors to be uh, twice as close as uh, they would normally be. They also make the these thin sheets of uh, ferrite absorbent material. And that, if these kind of look familiar, this is what they use on a, a stealth aircraft for the uh, skin. It's essentially a rubber with a, a ferrite material embedded in it and then it, that of course uh, absorbs the uh, uh, radar waves along with the facetine kind of re absorbs them and it reflects them away from the uh, uh, radar that's uh, tracking the device I'm going to put the uh, electro reflector. Well, first you can see the uh, unmodulated uh, carrier. I have the uh, VGA signal generator drain any signal through our retroreflector so we should see the modulation appear on the spectrum analyzer. You can kind of see the sidebands. It's being uh, amplitude modulated. It, all red video signal is uh, uh, it's modulating the FET which is creating an amplitude modulated backscatter. the audio up on the radar unit itself. You can actually hear the horizontal sync frequency so it'll change the sync. That's at um, 75 hertz right now. That's 60 hertz vertical sync frequency. I think I have with some other modes. Uh, There, that's 165 hertz vertical sync frequency. Um, that's important because um, since the uh, Rage Master units don't have any sort of a clock, uh, the NSA recommends planting a tawdry yard. They actually uh, mentioned it in the, in the little. Uh, Tawdry, route, tawdry Yard is used as a beacon, typically to assist in locating and identifying deployed Rage Master units. That's because there's no uh, clock essentially to look for. You'd, you'd sweep the target area with your uh, photo angle or CTX 4000. You'd listen to, uh, for that distinct ultrasonic carrier from the Tawdry Yard unit. But it, it's also possible to use the vertical sync frequency. The problem is, is just about every monitor has the same vertical sync frequency, so you can't really identify that individual monitor. And the uh, frequencies tend to be, you know, like 60, 75 hertz, and that's going to be, you know, a lot of noise, and, you know, mechanical noise, electrical noise in that uh, frequency range. But in a pinch, you can uh, just, you know, on your photo angle unit, you have your IF output. You can just slap a audio amplifier on your IRQ outputs and a pair of headphones. You can literally just listen for the horizontal or the vertical uh, sync frequencies. Um, yeah, like I said, the actual processing the uh, video signal is a little more complex. Uh, it is, you know, AM. So what you do 
is on your I or your Q output, you would uh, have like a wide ba wide band, you know, maybe like a 500 megahertz or so wide band IF amplifier. That's another. Oh, that's. Uh, if you ever wonder where that bandwidth comes from in the CTX 4000 for the photo angle, which goes up to 450 megahertz. That bandwidth refers to the IF bandwidth, and these video signals tend to be fairly wide banded, so you need to have, you know, wide band IF amplifiers, your iron Q IF amplifiers. That signal can then uh, be processed as a wide band signal, uh, probably low pass filtered, and you would apply that essentially to your host monitor, viewing the signal right into the red video input and you would expl supply externally the horizontal and, and vertical synchronization frequencies. Uh, like I said, they have to be the, the sync frequencies have to be exact to your, uh, your target monitor, otherwise the picture will roll across the screen. So, the NSA has a device they call the Night Watch, and that essentially just connects directly to the video outputs. Well, they call it the video output. Oh, what's the uh, uh, baseband signal output from the uh, photo angle or the CTX 4000 radar unit itself. You take that output and connect it into the night watch unit. It has a uh, spectral analysis up to 150 kilohertz. What that does is, uh, if you can kind of see on the spectrum analyzer, I can, um, not to, there's a series of spikes, and those spikes are the uh, horizontal sync frequencies being modulated within the backscattered signal itself. And if I were to have a low frequency spectrum analyzer connected to that output of the photo angle or CTX 4000, um, you could actually view the, the, this very distinct horizontal sync frequency. Um, Every monitor is going to be slightly different, you know. When you read the specs, it says like 47 kilohertz, but in reality it's going to be 46.943 something, you know, it's going to be just a few hertz off, you know. Or, you know, even kilohertz off. Um, so you need to get that exact uh, frequency generated. Um, and, like I said, once you get the general horizontal, you can just divide down and get the vertical, and it should be, you know, it's not too bad to figure out. Of course, their device is a little more advanced. It phase locks to the uh, exact signal, and they can store it, and they can, you know, do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, the audio or the video processing is a little more advanced than I know how to do. But that this could be a good project for somebody else if they want to figure this out. It, it might be doable in software. I know how to do it in, in hardware. At least um, this is kind of how um, the old analog cable TV, uh, the scrambling works where they would uh, reduce the horizontal sync frequencies. You had to reinsert the horizontal sync frequencies. You kind of count the lines and reinsert that line. Um, so it is doable, in hardware at least. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure somebody could, uh, some DSP whiz or something can do that all in, a, or even some, uh, one of those uh, USB uh, RTL dongles or whatever. Uh, figure that out. It'd be a good project for somebody else, I think. But uh, this is definitely a good start for uh, uh, building your own uh, uh, Rage Master units, to, or to at least to get an idea of how to uh, intercept a uh, remote uh, VG monitor.